Hello and welcome to the introduction to the Toxiray Pro PID from Ray Systems. Um, included here we've got the PID unit, um, but we can also equally get LEL, CO2 and toxic gas sensor units. Um, the unit um, has the sensor positioned on the top. This happens to be a fan assisted unit as it's using a PID. So the fan is in this section and the PID itself is in this section. Uh, charging and data download via the bottom. It's a rechargeable battery pack. You can see this is an ATEX approved device. Um, recharges via the, the data download and recharging station. Data download on the left hand side of the station and charging on the right and it simply clicks into position to charge and data download. We'll look at the operation of the Auto Ray 2 calibration dock in a later video. So operationally speaking, uh, again it's normal Ray position. It's two buttons of operation, single button click to turn the unit on and then it will go through the standard startup procedure. Uh, quick instrument test, so this is an industrial hygiene unit and it will go through the standard self testing that all Ray instruments do. This unit happens to have a 9.8 electron volt lamp installed inside it, so it's better for the aromatic spectrum, uh, but you can equally get this unit with a 10.6 electron volt lamp. Usually I wouldn't rely on any measurements within the first five minutes of operation, um, although it will give you a direct reading VOC measurement from startup. Uh, this save icon up at the top uh, right hand side is letting me know that it's data logging and then we've got a battery indicator. Uh, this lets me know CAS calibration, whether it's due or not. Um, we can scroll through the options on the instrument, so scroll across or alarm test. So that gives us a quick beep alarm test. Scroll across, we can see TWAs, STELs and PEAKS, uh, time and dates. Um, this actually does have wireless inside it, so it's giving me the PAN IDs and channel numbers, etc., that we need to um, view it within an echo view system. Our color measurement gas, so we can uh, check that we're set on a calibration for isobutylene and a measurement at the moment for isobutylene and what the correction factors are. Enter communication modes and stop the measurement. This would be how we would interface with the device. Um, via the computer, so I just say yes here if I wanted to do that, and then we're back to where we started. Um, to get into the menus, we hold both buttons together. Um, at this point, I'm asked for a password. The password as default is 0000, so I will set that across on this device, across to OK, yes. Now we're in the usual Ray menu, so you'll recognize this from any other Ray device that you may have seen. So we've got the span calibration um, and zero calibrations. We can also do a bump test on this device. So to bump test the instrument, we would just select this, add some isobutylene, and it will automatically recognize um, isobutylene has been applied, but in this case, I'm not going to. So I shall quit out of that. A zero calibration, so we'll apply a zero reference gas. If we had a clean air sample or a carbon filter, we'd now add it to the top of the device using the calibration cap supplied. So I can apply the calibration cap to the top of the device. Um, it is important to use the calibration cap to make sure you get a nice tight connection. So the calibration cap clips into position on the top, should have a nice tight connection. Uh, we haven't seen that this has gone over the edge on the boot, so we clip this into position. Nice tight connection, and then we would apply our zero gas, or in this particular instance, because I know I don't have any VOCs in the atmosphere, I'll just start the zero. It's a 60 second zero, and at the end of that period, we should see a positive zero reading. So we can now see the zero reading is done, a reading of 0, 0.0 ppm. So now I'm gonna perform a span calibration on the device. So I'm using a manual regulator with a can of isobutylene. So firstly, we will select span calibration. Um, this is um, set to calibrate to 10 parts per million. I happen to have 100 parts per million. So I'm gonna change this value. So we select the yes, and then we will change this to be set to 100 ppm. Okay, so now it's asking for 100 ppm to apply the gas. So in this particular device, I can just apply the reference gas, turn on the regulator, the manual regulator, and it has recognized that there's gas been applied. It will now do a 60 second calibration on the device. So now we can see that calibration has been successful. Now I'm getting the standard alarms, so I'll just remove, turn off the regulator, 
and remove my gas cap and calibration goes. It will stay in alarm state until the unit has cleared down, which we can now see it has. We can also change to different cal gas types. So if we want to calibrate for different gases, we could, for example, benzene at five ppm if you so wish. Um, in our circumstances, we don't really want to do that. So we'll just quit out of that menu. We can then exit from the calibration menu and look at our measurement menus. So in terms of measurements, we can change our measurement gases in terms of um, preset correction factors for whatever gas we like or happens to be in the library. We can also do through this through the software, which is uh, significantly quicker. Um, we can change the measurement, measurement units, so whether we want to be measuring in parts per million or milligrams per cubic meter. Uh, we can also just exit back. So our alarm settings, these will give you general alarm settings like high alarm, low alarm, stellar alarm, TWA alarm, our alarm mode is in terms of whether it's a latched alarm yeah, or um, just a standard safety alarm. Buzzer and light settings. This does also have a man down feature, much like the multi-ray. So if you go and check out our multi-ray video, you can see a bit more about the man down settings. And then we can exit on that unit. We can change the data log settings. So clear the data log, change the interval period, what data we want to log, bit averages, maxes, etc. Uh, our data log type, so what happens when we where full, whether it's a wrap around or just closes, and the general monitor setup. So this is things like our wireless, um, our site ID, our user ID, if we have any, uh, what particular user mode we want to be in, date, time, temperature units, language, zero at startup, whether we want to apply a zero at startup. I would usually suggest having a zero at startup enabled as long as you know you're gonna be in atmosphere without any VOCs present. Uh, LCD contrast and then exit. To turn the device off, we press and hold the on off button or the mode button. It's got a five second countdown. And now the unit is in an off position. Uh, check out our other videos to have a look at the auto ray calibration station uh, using this particular device. Alternatively, you can go and visit our website at www.safetymonitors.co.uk or do give us a call on 01489 890 458 between 9 and 5 Monday to Friday or outside of normal working hours, please do give us a call on 07951 854 824. We're here when you need us and we understand that the normal 9 to 5 day doesn't always apply. So please do feel free to give us a call. Thanks for visiting and we hope to see you again soon.